Mini Puff, could you hand me that machine there? No, not the handheld plasma array. No, that that other one. This? But this is a screw. So what's your point? A screw is a machine as well. It is called a simple machine. Many people think machines have to have a motor or electricity or something that powers them. Simple machines use power of the human kind. century, a Greek philosopher, Archimedes, whose job was basically to sit around and think about the world around him, came up with five simple machines. Archimedes came up with the screw, the wedge, the pulley, the wheel and axle, the inclined plane, <laughs> and the lever. Today we're going to focus on the lever and the wedge. But how do simple machines work? Simple machines help make work easier by providing a mechanical advantage. A mechanical advantage is when you need less force to do the same amount of work. All of these increase and changes the direction of an applied force. But what is applied force exactly? Applied force is the force that a person or another object applies to an object. So in this case, here. snack. Cheese. This is a wedge. A very small, a very slim one, but one nonetheless. So, what other kinds of tools are wedges and how do they work? Shovels, axes, and chisels and hammers are all examples of wedges. A wedge uses your applied force as input force and increases the output force. A shovel makes it easier to dig in the dirt. An ax makes it easier to chop wood. And a chisel makes it much easier to break apart stone. Imagine how effective it would be to hit a stone with a hammer versus using a hammer and chisel. A lever can make light work of a heavy load. Let's add a weight to this lever. Oh, but it's only one-sided, so of course it's going to fall. Let's try this again. Now we will add weight to both sides. Aww, but the baby isn't heavy enough. The weight weighs more than the baby. 
that's because of where the fulcrum is located. Right in the middle of the lever means that both sides must weigh the same. Our force down must be greater than the force to lift it up. But if we move the fulcrum to one side, that changes it entirely. Now when we add the weight and the baby, now the baby does not need to weigh as much. Hi friends, this is one of our kitty cats. Say hi, Marley. Yes. This week, I'm going to give you two optional activities that are quite fun. The first is an online game from the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, one of my all-time favorite places to visit. The second is a hands-on activity. You can do a small-scale version in your own home, or you can take it outside and do a larger scale like I'm about to show you. For now, say bye, Marley. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, I have moved outside so we have a little bit more room. I have a lever set up, fulcrum, the long plank, and a weight. This weight is about 50 pounds. You can use a log, a pencil, anything for a fulcrum that fits it size-wise. So I'm going to use my human input and press down. <laughs> I am pressing down. For a visual aid to help you, I have some other stones. Just place them according to size. Nothing. So let's try something else. Let's roll the fulcrum closer to the weight. Quite easy to lift. And so you can see, so you can see it. Whoa. Two stones lifted it. Input force here, and that is moving it. The movement is the output. Now let's try something else. I have a much longer plank, as you can see. I'm going to place one stone at the end. One stone was enough to move it. So, the longer the plank and the fulcrum placed closer to the weight, you have a better lever. <laughs>